the Earth had been at peace for over a century, ever since the formation of the United Terran Federation. Humanity had evolved past its warring nature, focusing instead on science, exploration, and diplomacy. However, the galaxy was not as tranquil. The Federation's scouts detected an ominous force approaching the outer colonies, the Vorthak, a ruthless alien empire known for their relentless conquests. Captain Ethan Hayes of the UTS Resolute, a veteran explorer and diplomat, was tasked with a seemingly impossible mission to prevent the Vorthak invasion through negotiation. Hayes, with his crew of seasoned officers, embarked on a journey to the Vorthak stronghold, a colossal space station orbiting the gas giant Althara. The Resolute's journey was a tense one. As the ship glided through the vastness of space, Hayes couldn't shake off the unease that had settled in his chest. The Vorthak were infamous for their brutality, and negotiating with them would be like walking a tightrope over a pit of fire. The Resolute arrived at Althara, and the sight was intimidating. The Vorthak station loomed large, a dark and foreboding structure bristling with weapons. As they approached, the ship was hailed by the Vorthak command, and an escort of heavily armed vessels guided them to the docking bay. Hayes and his diplomatic envoy, including his trusted advisor, Dr. Ilara Whitfield, and Security Chief Lieutenant Jonas Harker, disembarked. They were greeted by a phalanx of Vorthak soldiers, their reptilian eyes cold and unyielding. General Vokar, a towering, menacing figure with scales glinting under the harsh lights, awaited them in the Grand Chamber. General Vokar's presence was overwhelming. His eyes, a chilling shade of yellow, bore into Hayes as he approached the negotiation table. The chamber itself was vast and austere, with high ceilings and walls adorned with trophies of past conquests. The atmosphere was thick with tension, and Hayes could feel the weight of the mission pressing down on him. Welcome, Captain Hayes. Vokar's voice was a low growl, filled with barely concealed contempt. I hope you have not come to waste my time. Hayes took a deep breath, steeling himself. General Vokar, I come on behalf of the United Terran Federation. We seek a peaceful resolution to avoid unnecessary conflict. Vokar's laugh was harsh and mocking. Peaceful resolution. Your kind is weak, hiding behind diplomacy. We, the Vorthak, understand only strength and power. The negotiations quickly turned hostile. Vokar dismissed every proposal Hayes made, his disdain for humans evident in every word. Dr. Whitfield presented the Federation's offer for trade and mutual cooperation, but Vokar's response was a thinly veiled threat of annihilation. You speak of peace, yet you bring nothing of value, Vokar sneered. We will take what we want, and you will either submit or be destroyed. Hayes, maintaining his composure, attempted to appeal to Vokar's sense of reason. War will bring suffering to both our peoples. There is a better way, a path to mutual benefit. Vokar leaned forward, his eyes narrowing. You are deluded, human. The Vorthak Empire has thrived on conquest and domination. Your pleas for peace are nothing but the whining of a frightened child. The meeting ended abruptly, with Vokar issuing an ultimatum, surrender or face obliteration. Hayes and his team were escorted back to the Resolute. The weight of failure, heavy on their shoulders. As the ship departed Althara, Hayes knew they were running out of time. Returning to Earth, Admiral Ethan Hayes faced the Federation Council with the grim news. The Council Chamber, a vast room lined with holographic displays and bustling with delegates from all across Earth and its colonies, buzzed with tension. The atmosphere was electric as the gravity of the situation sank in. President Ilara Singh, her face stern yet compassionate, called the meeting to order. Admiral Hayes, please brief the Council on the outcome of your mission. Hayes stood, his posture rigid, and addressed the assembly. The Vorthak are uncompromising. General Vokar has issued an ultimatum. Surrender or be destroyed. We must prepare for the worst. A murmur of concern rippled through the chamber. General Marcus Steele, a veteran soldier with a reputation for being unyielding, stood up. We cannot afford to wait for them to attack us. We must strengthen our defenses and be ready to strike. Hayes nodded. I agree, General. However, we cannot face the Vorthak alone. We need allies, and we need them now. President Singh leaned forward. Admiral, 
Do you believe the other galactic civilizations will join us in this fight? It's our best hope, Hayes replied. The Zalari and the Thandari have the technology and the manpower to help us turn the tide. We must send emissaries to plead our case. The debate was fierce. The pacifists argued for continued negotiation, while others, led by the hawkish General Marcus Steele, advocated for military preparedness. President Ilara Singh, a firm believer in diplomacy, faced a difficult decision. We cannot afford to provoke them, she said, her voice steady but filled with concern. We must exhaust all avenues for peace before considering military action. The council voted, and the decision was made to reach out to the Zalari and the Thandari. As emissaries were dispatched, the Federation scientists and engineers worked around the clock, upgrading their ships and developing new weapons. The UTS Resolute, now a symbol of humanity's resilience, underwent significant enhancements, making it one of the most advanced vessels in the fleet. Admiral Hayes spent countless hours with his crew, preparing for the imminent conflict. Lieutenant Marcus Chen, a tactical genius, ran simulations to devise strategies against the Vorthak. Dr. Ilara Whitfield focused on understanding Vorthak culture, hoping to find a diplomatic angle they might have missed. Commander Ava Morales led rigorous combat drills, ensuring the crew was ready for any scenario. The Galactic Congress, a rare assembly of the galaxy's most powerful civilizations, convened on the neutral planet of Viridian. The Congress Hall was a marvel of architecture, with representatives from dozens of species gathered under a dome that shimmered with the light of a thousand stars. The atmosphere was tense, with the fate of the galaxy hanging in the balance. Admiral Hayes, along with Ambassador Lyra from the Zalari and Warlord Korak of the Thandari, stood before the assembly. Hayes felt the weight of responsibility pressing down on him as he began his speech. Esteemed representatives, the Vorthak Empire poses a threat not just to humanity, but to the entire galaxy. Their ambition knows no bounds, and their methods are brutal. We must unite to stand against this common enemy. Ambassador Lyra, a tall and graceful figure with shimmering silver skin, spoke next. The Zalari have long valued peace and knowledge. We cannot stand by while the Vorthak threaten our allies and disrupt the harmony of the galaxy. We pledge our support to the United Terran Federation. Warlord Korak, a towering Thandari warrior with a fearsome presence, added his voice. The Thandari live by a code of honor. We do not seek war, but we will not shy away from a fight to protect our way of life. The Vorthak must be stopped. The debate that followed was intense. Some civilizations, weary of war, hesitated to commit their resources. Others, recognizing the existential threat posed by the Vorthak, rallied to the cause. After hours of discussion, a fragile alliance was formed. The Solari would provide advanced technology and intelligence, while the Thandari would contribute their formidable warrior caste. The coalition set to work immediately, coordinating their forces and sharing knowledge. The Zolari's engineers collaborated with Federation scientists to integrate cutting-edge technology into the fleet. The Thandari warriors trained side-by-side -side with Federation soldiers, fostering camaraderie and mutual respect. Back on the Resolute, the crew felt a renewed sense of purpose. Admiral Hayes and his officers worked tirelessly to ensure the fleet was battle-ready. Lieutenant Chen fine-tuned their strategies, incorporating the new technology and tactics. Dr. Whitfield continued her diplomatic efforts, liaising with their new allies and seeking any advantage they could find. As the coalition forces prepared for the impending conflict, a sense of unity and determination spread throughout the galaxy. The stage was set for an epic confrontation with the Vorthak, and the hope for a brighter future hinged on their ability to stand together. The Vorthak launched their first assault at Orion's Belt, a strategic location rich in resources and a crucial waypoint for interstellar travel. The Coalition fleet, led by Admiral Ethan Hayes, received word of the attack and immediately mobilized. The tension was palpable as the fleet jumped to warp, racing against time to defend their territory. As the fleet exited warp, the scene before them was chaotic. Vorthak ships, dark and bristling with weapons, swarmed the area, attacking mining stations and civilian transports. The Coalition fleet, 
a mix of Federation, Zolari, and Thundari vessels sprang into action. All ships, engage at will, Hayes commanded, his voice calm but authoritative. Protect the civilians and drive the Vorthak back. The battle that ensued was fierce. Federation frigates and destroyers darted through the battlefield, their sleek designs allowing for agile maneuvers. The Zolari ships, equipped with advanced energy weapons, provided long-range support, their precise beams cutting through Vorthak armor. The Thandari warships, heavily armored and armed to the teeth, waded into the thick of the fight, their warrior crews relishing the close-quarters combat. Lieutenant Marcus Chen, stationed in the Resolute's command center, coordinated the fleet's movements. His strategic brilliance shone as he directed squadrons to outflank the Vorthak exploiting weaknesses in their formations. Commander Ava Morales led a squadron of strike fighters, weaving through enemy fire and delivering punishing blows to the Vorthak cruisers. Despite their numerical superiority, the Vorthak were unprepared for the coalition's coordinated assault. The combined firepower and tactics of the Allied forces began to turn the tide. Admiral Hayes, observing the battle from the bridge of the Resolute, saw an opportunity. Chen, Concentrate fire on the Vorthak flagship, Hayes ordered. If we can take it out, the rest will scatter. Under Chen's direction, the Coalition ships focused their attacks on the Vorthak flagship, a massive dreadnought bristling with weapons. The Resolute, along with the Zolari and Thandari ships, unleashed a barrage of missiles and energy blasts. The Vorthak flagship shields faltered, and a final concentrated volley from the Resolute's main cannons shattered its hull. With their flagship destroyed, the remaining Vorthak ships lost cohesion. The coalition forces pressed their advantage, driving the Vorthak into a full retreat. As the last of the enemy ships jumped to warp, a cheer went up through the coalition fleet. The victory at Orion's belt was a significant morale boost for the coalition. However, it was also a stark reminder of the Vorthak threat. The battle had been won, but we know it's nothing close to an end. The Vorthak regrouped and launched a massive attack on New Terra, one of the Federation's core worlds. The planet, a jewel of human civilization with sprawling cities and lush landscapes, was a symbol of everything humanity had achieved. The Vorthak knew that striking at New Terra would deal a severe blow to the Federation's morale. The Coalition fleet, still recovering from the battle at Orion's Belt, scrambled to defend New Terra. Admiral Hayes, aboard the Resolute, led the defense. The skies above the planet were soon filled with the streaks of energy weapons and the explosions of ship-to-ship -ship combat. The Vorthak came in force, their ships blotting out the stars. They unleashed waves of fighters and bombers, targeting civilian infrastructure and military installations alike. The Resolute and its allied ships fought valiantly, but the sheer number of Vorthak vessels threatened to overwhelm them. On the ground, the situation was dire. Vorthak troops landed in several cities, engaging Federation ground forces in brutal urban warfare. Commander Ava Morales, having returned from her strike fighter squadron, took command of the ground defense in the capital city of Nova Prime. She led her troops with determination, coordinating with local militia and using guerrilla tactics to hold the line against the invaders. In orbit, Admiral Hayes faced a critical decision. The coalition fleet was stretched thin, and without reinforcements, Nutera could fall. He contacted General Thalcor, the Thandari leader, who was commanding a separate battle group. Thalcor, we need immediate assistance at Nutera, Hayes said, urgency in his voice. We are en route, Admiral, Thalcor replied. Hold your position. We will not let Nutera fall. True to his word, Thalcor's battle group arrived, their heavily armored ships tearing into the Vorthak fleet. The reinforcements turned the tide, and the coalition forces began to push the Vorthak back. Commander Morales, leading a daring counterattack, managed to infiltrate the Vorthak command center in Nova Prime. Her strike team, moving with precision and speed, took out key Vorthak leaders, disrupting their ground operations. This bold move allowed Federation forces to regroup and drive the Vorthak troops out of the city. Above, Admiral Hayes ordered a coordinated strike on the Vorthak's orbital command ship. The combined firepower of the Resolute and Thalcor's flagship pierced the Vorthak defenses, 
destroying the command ship and sending the remaining Vorthak vessels into disarray. The siege was lifted, but the cost was high. The cities of New Terra lay in ruins, and many lives were lost. The victory was bittersweet, and the Coalition forces knew they had to be better prepared for the battles to come. As the Coalition regrouped, Admiral Hayes addressed his crew and the people of New Terra. We have faced the darkness and emerged victorious, but this war is far from over. We will rebuild, we will strengthen our defenses, and we will fight for our future. Humanity will not be broken. The determination in Hayes's voice resonated with everyone. The war with the Vorthak had just begun, but the coalition was more united than ever. The fight for survival and freedom would continue, and they would face it together. Desperate for an edge in the escalating war with the Vorthak, the United Terran Federation turned to its top scientists and engineers. In a hidden research facility on the moon Titan, Dr. Olivia Sanderson and her team were working on a secret project, the Nova Cannon a weapon of unprecedented power capable of turning the tide of the war. However, its potential for destruction raised moral and ethical dilemmas. Admiral Hayes, summoned to Titan for a briefing, was given a tour of the facility. The Nova Cannon, a sleek and imposing piece of technology, sat in the center of a massive lab, surrounded by a hive of activity. Admiral Hayes, this is the Nova Cannon, Dr. Sanderson said her voice tinged with both pride and concern. It harnesses zero-point energy to deliver a focused beam capable of obliterating anything in its path. However, it's untested in combat, and the collateral damage could be catastrophic. Hayes studied the weapon, a heavy weight settling in his chest. This could be the key to defeating the Vorthak, but we need to be cautious. The last thing we want is to destroy the very worlds we're trying to protect. Back on Earth, the Federation Council debated the use of the Nova Cannon. President Elara Singh, though wary of its destructive power, recognized the urgency of the situation. We are faced with an existential threat. If we don't use every tool at our disposal, we risk losing everything. The Council voted to authorize the deployment of the Nova Cannon, but only as a last resort. Hayes was given command of the weapon, and the Resolute was outfitted with the cannon, integrating it into their systems. The fleet, now armed with this formidable new weapon, prepared for the final confrontation with the Vorthak. The coalition fleet, bolstered by the Nova Cannon and the support of their allies, set course for Althara, the heart of the Vorthak Empire. The Vorthak Stronghold, a sprawling fortress orbiting the gas giant, was the nerve center of their military operations. Taking Althara would deal a crippling blow to the Vorthak and potentially end the war. As the fleet emerged from warp, the Vorthak forces were ready. Thousands of enemy ships filled the space around Althara, forming an almost impenetrable wall. The coalition, undeterred, began their assault. All ships form up and engage, Hayes ordered. We have one shot at this. Let's make it count. The battle was colossal. A symphony of destruction played out on an unprecedented scale. The Resolute, at the center of the fleet, unleashed volleys of missiles and energy blasts, its advanced technology cutting through the Vorthak defenses. The Zolari ships, their energy beams slicing through enemy hulls, provided crucial support, while the Thandari warships charged into the fray, their heavy guns pounding the Vorthak lines. Admiral Hayes, focused and determined, coordinated the assault from the bridge of the Resolute. Lieutenant Chen's strategic brilliance shone once more as he directed squadrons to exploit gaps in the Vorthak formations. Commander Morales, leading a wing of strike fighters, targeted key enemy vessels, their precision strikes causing chaos among the Vorthak ranks. Despite their efforts, the Vorthak's sheer numbers began to take their toll. The coalition ships, though advanced and well-coordinated, were struggling to maintain their momentum. The battle reached a critical point, and Hayes knew it was time to deploy the Nova Cannon. Prepare the Nova Cannon, Hayes commanded, his voice steady. Target the Vorthak command station. The crew worked quickly, bringing the Nova Cannon online. The weapon hummed with power, its energy reading spiking as it charged. The Vorthak, realizing the threat, focused their fire on the Resolute, desperate to stop the cannon from firing. Shields at maximum, Hayes ordered. Hold the line. We need to give the cannon time to charge. 
The Resolute shook under the relentless barrage, but the crew held firm. Dr. Sanderson, monitoring the cannon systems, gave the signal. Admiral, the Nova cannon is ready. Fire, Hayes commanded. The Nova cannon unleashed a blinding beam of energy, cutting through space and striking the Vorthak command station. The impact was catastrophic, the station erupting in a massive explosion that sent shockwaves through the Vorthak fleet. The command structure shattered. The Vorthak ships fell into disarray, their coordinated efforts collapsing. All ships, press the attack, Hayes shouted. We have them on the run. The coalition forces, seizing the opportunity, redoubled their efforts. The Vorthak, leaderless and disorganized, were pushed back. The combined might of the Federation, Zalari, and Thandari overwhelmed the remaining Vorthak ships, driving them into full retreat. As the last Vorthak vessel fled, a cheer erupted through the coalition fleet. The battle for Althara was won, and with it, a decisive victory that signaled the beginning of the end for the Vorthak Empire. The cost had been high, but the coalition's determination and unity had prevailed. Admiral Hayes, standing on the bridge of the Resolute, looked out at the wreckage of the Vorthak fleet. The war was not over, but for the first time, there was hope. The coalition had struck a significant blow, and the path to peace was now within reach. The Vorthak, though weakened, were still a formidable force and their desperation made them even more dangerous. Admiral Hayes and his crew aboard the Resolute received intelligence from the Zolari. A large contingent of Vorthak ships was regrouping near the planet Zorath, preparing for a final, all-out assault. The Coalition fleet had no choice but to confront them head-on, hoping to deliver a decisive blow. The Resolute led the Coalition armada into the fray. The battle for Zorath was brutal with both sides suffering heavy losses. Admiral Hayes directed the fleet with precision, but the Vorthak's relentless assault began to take its toll. The Nova Cannon, a game-changer in the previous battle, was recharged and ready, but using it again would leave the Resolute vulnerable. As the battle raged, General Vokar, the Vorthak leader, transmitted a message to the Resolute. His image appeared on the view screen, his reptilian eyes filled with fury and desperation. Admiral Hayes, you may have won a battle, but you will not win this war. We will fight to the last breath. Hayes, maintaining his composure, replied, General Vokar, this war has cost us all dearly. It's not too late to end this conflict. Surrender, and we can negotiate a peaceful resolution. Vokar's response was a snarl of defiance. Never, the Vorthak will never surrender. With negotiations off the table, Hayes knew they had to end this once and for all. He ordered the fleet to concentrate their fire on the Vorthak's command ships, hoping to disrupt their coordination further. The Resolute, at the center of the battle, took heavy fire but held its ground. Prepare the Nova Cannon, Hayes commanded. We're going to finish this. As the Nova Cannon charged, the Vorthak focused their attacks on the Resolute, trying to stop the weapon from firing. The ship shook violently under the barrage, systems failing and crew members struggling to keep the ship operational. Commander Ava Morales, now in charge of the Resolute's defenses, coordinated the efforts to protect the ship. Her quick thinking and decisive actions kept the shields up long enough for the Nova Cannon to reach full charge. Admiral, the Nova Cannon is ready, Dr. Sanderson reported. Hayes gave the order. Fire the Nova Cannon. The weapon unleashed its devastating beam, targeting the heart of the Vorthak fleet. The blast tore through the enemy ships, causing massive explosions and scattering debris. The Vorthak forces, leaderless and broken, began to retreat. But the victory came at a great cost. The Resolute, having taken critical damage, was on the brink of destruction. Admiral Hayes, understanding the gravity of the situation, ordered an evacuation. All hands, abandon ship, Hayes commanded. Get to the escape pods. As the crew scrambled to evacuate, Hayes and his senior officers stayed behind to ensure the safe departure of their comrades. The ship's systems were failing, and the Resolute was moments away from exploding. Lieutenant Chen approached Hayes, concern etched on his face. Admiral, we need to go. Now. Hayes nodded, giving one last look at the bridge that had been his home for so long. Let's go. The senior officers made their way to the last escape pod 
just as the Resolute's hull began to break apart. The escape pod launched, speeding away from the doomed ship. Moments later, the Resolute exploded, a brilliant flash of light marking the end of the legendary vessel. The Coalition fleet, though battered and bruised, had won. The Vorthak were defeated, their empire crumbling. The cost had been high, but the sacrifice had not been in vain. In the aftermath of the final battle, the Galactic Congress convened once more on the neutral planet of Viridian. Representatives from the Coalition gathered to negotiate the terms of peace and rebuild the galaxy. The Vorthak, now leaderless and broken, sent emissaries to sue for peace, agreeing to disarm and join the new Galactic Union. Admiral Hayes, hailed as a hero, addressed the Congress. His presence commanded respect, and his words carried the weight of hard-earned wisdom. We have faced a great darkness and emerged victorious, Hayes began, but our victory came at a tremendous cost. We must honor the sacrifices made by building a future where such conflicts are a thing of the past. President Ilara Singh, now more determined than ever to forge a lasting peace, led the efforts to establish the Galactic Union. The Union's charter emphasized cooperation, mutual defense, and the pursuit of knowledge. The Zalari and the Thandari, having fought alongside humanity, played key roles in shaping this new era of unity. On Earth, the reconstruction efforts began in earnest. The cities of Nutera, though scarred by battle, became symbols of resilience and hope. The Federation, with the help of their allies, worked tirelessly to rebuild and strengthen their defenses. Admiral Hayes, now a revered figure, continued to serve as a leader and diplomat. His experiences during the war had taught him the value of unity and the importance of diplomacy. He traveled across the galaxy, fostering relations between the member worlds of the Galactic Union. Commander Ava Morales, promoted to captain, took command of a new ship, the UTS Phoenix. The Phoenix, built with the latest technology and designed for both exploration and defense, embodied the spirit of the new era. Morales and her crew embarked on missions of discovery, seeking out new civilizations and forging new alliances. Lieutenant Marcus Chen, now a senior strategist, worked with the Galactic Union's Defense Council to ensure the security of all member worlds. His tactical genius and unwavering dedication became instrumental in maintaining peace. Dr. Ilara Whitfield, continuing her work in diplomacy and cultural studies, helped bridge the gaps between the diverse species of the Union. Her efforts to promote understanding and cooperation were crucial in preventing future conflicts. As the Resolute's crew went their separate ways, they carried with them the lessons of the war. Their bond, forged in the crucible of battle, remained strong, and their dedication to peace and unity became a guiding light for the entire galaxy. The shadow of war had passed, and a new dawn had arrived. The galactic union built on the foundations of sacrifice and hope promised a brighter future. The legacy of the Resolute and its crew lived on, inspiring generations to come. In the vast expanse of space, the UTS Phoenix embarked on its latest mission, a symbol of humanity's enduring spirit. Captain Morales stood on the bridge, looking out at the stars, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Set course for the unknown, she commanded. Let's see what's out there. As the Phoenix jumped to warp, the galaxy entered a new era of exploration, cooperation, and peace. The story of humanity and its allies had just begun and the future was filled with endless possibilities.